Good morning everyone. I am down in the guest bedroom because I've spent the morning here with the lady that's been doing all of my fabrics. She did the fabrics in my dressing room and I went to see her last week when it was book launch day because we are planning for the guest bedroom um, and she was just measuring things up so I thought I'd talk you through a little bit about what we're going to be doing in here because it is different obviously. I know I had um, an interior designer design this room um, and I didn't have like all of the finished information on it so and also putting the fabrics into my my own dressing room made me so happy that I really wanted to like hand select what was going in here and I was so inspired with the um, wisteria that you see coming down over the window which will just get more and more and more I decided that we were going to look for something a bit more fitting so when I found the um, Colfax and Fowler wallpaper that we've gone for in here I just thought it was perfect so let me show you well show you, I can't show you but I'll tell you so we are going to have the Colfax and Fowler wallpaper all over this room and then skirtings and coving is going to be painted in a little green paint which is sort of matches the paper of the the wallpaper so the background of the wallpaper then I'm having a custom made belt belt <laughs> custom made bespoke bed um, just because really this room is quite small I mean it's bigger than any bedroom I've ever had prior to living in this house however it is quite small in comparison to the other bedrooms in the house and Ali wanted to put in a king size bed. King size is too big for in here. I wouldn't be able to have my writing desk. And the good thing is about having a seamstress uh, make everything it means that you can have the bed made to your specifications. And I obviously know that our mattress was made to a special size. So I'll be able to just order a new mattress from there. Um, so we're going for a 180 by 200 bed with a super high headboard. This is the furniture that will be in the room. We've got cushions, I've gone for a canopy as well, a beautiful, just uh, ivory canopy. I think it will be so, so elegant. We've also gone for um, blinds and decorative curtains. So the curtains won't work, we'll have a little uh, blind because obviously having the desk here, curtains don't actually work with the desk. So, and I think the layering will be really, really nice. Um, what else are we doing in here? Oh my gosh, I feel like there's so much. There's a little cushion for my desk, which I'm having made. There's going to be a bolster, um, and lots of loveliness. So it's going to be, it's going to be quite like print heavy because obviously it's got the wisteria print and then we've got gingham, we've got greens, we've got some more wisteria, the silk wisteria cushions from Colfax and Fowler in their fabric. We've got a little like leaf ticking stripe for the blinds and there's like green tie back. Oh my God, it's gonna be so nice. It's, it's gonna be quite sort of like elegant um, country. If you think the, the room that I fell in love with at Ballyfin, this is very, very much like that. So yes, very, very, very excited. I need to find lamps for in here and um, just l little bits of decoration. Hello, small slug, small slug. Then coming down the hallway, um, into the laundry room. So in here, as mentioned, I'm having something done on that wall there and some, I'm probably gonna have three shelves, two or three shelves fitted. And I'm gonna have lots of different like floral vases, pots, things like that. It's gonna be sort of cross between a flower arranging room because I'm not um, lucky enough to have a separate laundry room and flower arranging room. But I did see that um, Emma Sims Hilditch has just sort of designed one and it was the laundry room. I could see the laundry uh, machine sticking out and that's what I'm gonna take inspiration from. So either some wallpaper on the back or some cladding and I've just had the seamstress measure up for a skirt to cover this up. So I just need to choose the fabric and the wallpaper and then we're good to go in here which is lovely as well but i'm gonna head down to the chickens um i let them out this morning at about 6 a.m but ali is fitting their automatic door today which is really good and i just wanted to let you know basically um i, I thought i'd bring you up to speed on the chickens we've got them settled we've got the dogs used to them as well because whereas barkley and lumi have been absolute angels porty has taken a little bit of time to get used to um having chickens in the garden he just I think he realised very early on, he was like, why isn't mummy let, letting me out in the garden? And he realised that it was his behaviour that was stopping him. He's so intelligent. And now he just turned a corner. So really good. So yes, that's the start of my morning as well. So I'm going to head down to the chickens. It's very windy today. The weather is... Oh, 
Porter gets very perturbed by the wind because he's not used to the, the sound, even though I feel like it's always quite windy here. So I thought I'd take you down to the chickens and introduce you to them. So what we will be installing around the edging is, first of all, we're going to put a little mini box hedge around the edge, and then we'll also introduce um, wildflower so that the wildflower comes up just like this um, and just protects the chickens even more. Oh, so to give you a little bit of an introduction, the very large black one on the right hand side, that is Beatrix and um, she's beautiful. She's got this flame red sort of um, scarf on and she's got almost like a sort of jadey green tinge to her feathers. Then the ginger one who Ali always calls ginger spice is um, Jemima, Jemima puddle chicken. And then the sort of grey blue one is Bluebell because that is literally her breed. They're also known as a Bluebell. Um, so it's perfect considering that was one of the chickens that I wanted. So we've got these girls to tide us over. Ali yesterday put together, handmade them a wonderful herb infused bath with herbs from the garden. So they've been having a lovely little dust bath there. They've got their grain and their water. And we should probably check if we've got any eggs. They usually lay. Oh, we have two eggs. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So one egg here and another. Can you see just down the back there? Little eggy. Morning, lady. Morning. Morning, lady. Yes, Jemima. So, we have <laughs> two eggs. <laughs> Honestly, this makes me so happy. You guys know how long I've wanted this, so to actually have this part of like my day is just, it fills my soul. This is gonna be my lunch or my brunch, so how lovely. Yes, Porty, I'm coming. Well, I was not going to show you um, any sort of new in pieces today. However, however, I have been waiting for these items to arrive for like nearly two months. I ordered these from Etsy. I basically went onto Etsy in search of um, some cool like linen brands on there that could make me some, some pieces and I found this one particular brand. And I think this was just an oversight and my, my order didn't get either made or dispatched. And I only ordered three things because it's quite difficult to be able to A, know what the colour is that you're ordering. It's not the easiest place to, to order from. However, saying that, I do think I've nailed it. So um, hopefully they fit me. Because again, the sizing was a bit interesting and things like that. But honestly, these look so gorgeous. First and foremost, I think I'm going to live in this dress. This is the most beautiful, like oatmeal wrap dress it's doing it no favors but it's got so much beautifulness in the in the fabric gorgeous ankle length and such an elegant neckline i'm going to order more straight away and the good thing is is that they've sent me all of their swatches so that it's even easier for me to order i think i'm going to order some ivory that's for sure i'm going to order some more of the natural because i think that is that what I ordered? No, that's not natural. What did I order? Ivory for sure. Although beige, beige is a little different. Anyway, before I go through the colors, I ordered this olive green skirt. So this has a little sort of zip closure. Again, beautiful, beautiful length. Let me pop it down here so you can see properly. I just, I loved the shape of this, the amount of fabric in the skirt. And the linen as beautiful as this, you know what I'm like, usually I go for Laura Piana. This probably doesn't, you know, withstand creasing, but to get the, the fabric and this colour and this shape, it was like near on impossible. So I got it in the green and then I got a different style. So this is without the sort of zip front, this is a back zipper. This feels lighter weight as well, so maybe it doesn't have as much fabric in the skirt but I'm definitely going to order some more. My goodness. Um, so I think they're all like made to order. You, I think you can influence like the, the, um, the sizing maybe a little bit, but I'm not entirely certain on that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is order some of the ivory 
or do I go for the beige? I think I'll probably go for the beige because it feels a bit warmer. But they've got camel. So if you wanted like a tan dress, light camel, warm olive. That's almost a bit too vibrant for me to wear, but I love that in rooms. Eggplant, oh my goodness, this is so helpful. See, I really loved this charcoal shade because it's almost like a navy, but it's um, a bit more sort of gray. See, moss green is really nice but I did the forest green. Is it forest green in the skirt? Yes, fo forest green in the skirt. <gasps> I'm so, so happy. Um, also, it looks like we're going to be picking up two more chickens today. Fingers crossed. Um, and Ali's actually gonna come with me on this occasion, so I'm really, really looking forward to this. The other brand that arrived is a brand that some of you have tagged me in on TikTok quite a lot. Um, it's a brand, I think it's called AIM, and they do beautiful, elegant styles, but in super um, comfortable, like a, almost like a jersey fabric. So this is their square-necked, full-skirted ivory dress. I just thought this for sort of traveling is such a wonderful way to feel lovely. And I've gone blurry, there we go. Um, feel lovely, but also just like more sort of comfortable dress wear when you want to look nice but also um, be comfortable, which I feel like is my ethos. Uh, they also sent another box as well. Aha, classic black. Perfect. Little classic black number with Chanel ballet pumps. This is so, so pretty. So yeah, two brands. One was obviously sent as gifting. The other one I just ordered myself. So the linen I ordered from Etsy myself. I love shopping on Etsy. It's probably one of my favorite places to shop. So yeah. Oh, I really want to try them on now. Do you know what? I'm just going to try them on now. Um, the skirts, I mean, because I've got trousers on, so it'd be super easy. Well, this is skirt number one, and it is an absolute win. Oh my gosh, it fits me perfectly on the waist. I've popped my little belt with it, my vintage belt, but it fits me perfectly. This is just so gorgeous. I feel very little house on the prairie, I'm not going to lie, especially in this colour, but I love it. I absolutely love it. This is like my happy place. Oh, wow. So much fabric as well. And the linen steams like an absolute dream. Oh my gosh. I was about to film then, and then Gemma arrived. She was dropping off some plants that are from her most recent kits. She basically does like monthly pots. So I often get like refreshed with her pots and it gives me the opportunity to breathe life back into my house. So um, yes, that's very, very good. But this is the, the navy blue one. Now this is a bit smaller. It may stretch out a little bit, but it's definitely a bit smaller on the waist. Um, this is pretty much the same shade as my skirt from the Caramillan collection, but the, the Caramillan was more of a sort of long A-line, whereas I really wanted this more like flirty, moving style option as well. The other one is very sleek and chic, whereas this is a bit more sort of feminine and elegant, I would say. So love this, I'm just gonna steam the dress, I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, this is my dream dress. Absolute dreamy, dreamy silhouette and color. I picked the perfect color in this. Wow. So I went for um, size two in everything. Now I did mention that one of the skirts was smaller, so um, it just, it came up quite tight um, with that one, but they're all the same size, size two, and I am definitely going to be ordering this dress and other pieces in other colorways and also other silhouettes. This is just perfection. And with the colors in my wardrobe as well. Wow. Oh my goodness. So, so gorgeous. I literally showed this to Gemma and Gemma was like, can you send me the link to this please immediately? And such a great price point for linen. Obviously linen is an expensive fabric because it is beautiful and it is natural, but worth it in my opinion. I love the way that it looks all the time. It just looks so like paired back, but also incredibly beautiful. 
stunning. Well, to everyone that tagged me in the in this dress on TikTok and Instagram, you're absolutely right. It is the perfect dress for like day wear, minimalistic style, but so comfortable. It also has this corsetry detail at the back. I think I've actually done this the wrong way, but it was threaded through the bottom first. So I assumed that you were supposed to lace it up to the middle, but I actually think that would look better just there. So I'll do that at the end, but beautiful square neckline. Obviously I've got it in the black as well, but I don't need to show you that on because I think you can see that this is a spectacular dress. So good for just day-to-day -day wear, super comfy material. I'm not sure uh, what the fabric composition is. Made ethically in England, it is 64% bamboo, 24% cotton, and 12% elastane. So beautifully made as well. This is the kind of jersey that you would want to be wearing, in my opinion. This is almost like, you, you know, like the Kardashians made those sort of jersey bodycon dresses really, really big. Well, this is like jersey, but make it for elegant fashion lovers <laughs> because this is spectacular. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I have just had a delivery of plants from Hello Petal, says Lydia, for a quiet potting up moment. She's also told me where they go. So we've got the white roses planter, the white rose in a 12 centimeter and the flowering strawberry. So we've got white roses, we've got a Ridgeron, we've got catmint. Yes, we've got catmint. This is to make a little planter out of my galvanized bucket. Then we have some angel vine and some white roses, but these are the kits that Gemma has just, they've just flown. She did these little strawberry pots and oh my gosh, they are so, so cute. So I'm gonna pot those up on the terrace, but her pots all sold out. So these ones were actually grown by her son. <gasps> How lovely was that? I, was, I said to him, I was like, where did you grow them? He was like, in my grand, I think it was like in my grandma's greenhouse or something like that. And I thought, oh, such a joy. So yes, I wanna do some potting up um, this afternoon as well. But Mr. Millen Gordon is nowhere to be found. I'm assuming that he must be in with the chickens. Yes, Mr. Millen Gordon is in with the chickens. He's, I think he's giving them some um, things to play on like tree stumps. Ah no, he's fitting the automatic door. Where's Jemima? Where's Jemima? All of them. Oh dear, they've managed to get dust they've kicked oh so they're kicking the dust out and they've kicked it into their blooming water so i'm gonna have to move their um dust bath a bit further away because they've i'm gonna have to give them some more water silly blooming hens what are you doing blue bell i just can't believe how picturesque this looks oh it makes me so happy looking back at the house now i feel like it's actually looking like a sort of garden home <laughs> that makes sense so ignoring all of the boxes um i am going to make myself some lunch with the eggs and i wouldn't do this again because i know that i made well you watched me make my breakfast in the other vlog but i didn't realize people would be interested in how i make my scrambled eggs and i also didn't realize i make it in a niche way so i just thought i'd explain it to you so that if you want to make scrambled eggs like mine then you can do I personally think that it is some of the best scrambled egg that I've ever had, um, but that is me. I also don't know if I have enough chives left in the garden. Um, I might try and pick up some chives today. Otherwise, if not, I will season and add some pea shoots uh, that I got from Le Manoir. So I'll bring you over to the stove. And um, it's not looking very pretty behind me at the moment, so I apologize for that, but there's boxes everywhere, so I'm gonna make myself. So I'm taking a little pot like this and we have two eggs. I'm going to do one of Bluebell's and one of either Jemima's or Beatrix's. I haven't really worked out who it is yet. And it really is so simple. You know me. I like homemade produce but not the most technical of cooks. If you remember, I didn't used to cook when I first started my channel. Uh, it was a very basic experience but nowadays with the help of my kitchen garden I have um, learnt a little bit. I know what I'm good at. I, I make a damn good pasta like uh, it's always perfectly al dente but um, 
I'm also very, very good at a risotto in my humble opinion, but I like my risotto nice and full of Parmesan. And uh, every so often I can bake a good cake. And I love that. I love experiencing new things, but it has been super fun learning to um, make. Oh, perfect today. So yes, I thought I would show you. Let's get that off because that's cooking very quickly. heat and I just do a dash of milk, some salt, I'm not a huge pepper lover and I do a knob of butter. The butter is probably so unhealthy but my goodness does it make it taste wonderful. Oh, So the butter that we use is the Dalesford organic butter which is salted. I love a salty butter personally. And I just have a dash of milk. A little bit of butter. It's probably ridiculous amounts, but I don't care. It makes me happy. We also use full fat. Like, nothing is like low fat anymore in the house. That's one of the things that we learned that was pretty gross um, to be including in your diet. Anything that's sort of low fat, low calorie. So we go for the nice full fat stuff. <laughs> Keep the butter out because I will be buttering my sourdough as well. Splashing bit of butter, just how we like it, because we want to get those good fats. Now I need a sort of in-between plate size, I've got massive plates and small plates and no medium plates. A little bit runny, perfect. Now I am just going to run to see if I've got enough chives. Turns out I had enough chives and I'm going to add the pea shoots as well, just because um, I fancy it. Why not all of the greens? Voila, pea shoots. Honestly, I would say if you grow one thing, grow pea shoots. Um, you can literally just put them in soil now and grow them on your windowsill and you will have loads to top all of your ujimi flips with, and they're so sweet. Oh, so delicious. Mr. Millen Gordon is sat with his chickens. You get getting pecked, blue, uh, snowdrop. This is one of the chickens that Ali picked up, snowdrop. And we are yet to name the other one, which is that one there. She gets pecked, but I've also noticed that- but she's pecking. No, 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 she's going to She's getting quite close to them. Yeah. So maybe they're a little bit nervous or they're pecking because they're like, whoa, why are you getting so close? Yeah, she's probably been a little bit over friendly. I can relate. <laughs> Come on, get in you get. Have a little dust bath. Yeah. Go on. Why? <laughs> what are you trying to eat it for? Get in it. These two just don't understand, do they? They think it's uh, food, but it's not. Well, they just kind of, they use a lot of grit and things like that for, because um, they don't have teeth, they use grit to break down their food. Ah. Oh, hello there, Bluebell. Who are you having a go at? You having a go at your mummy? Yes.
But we are back with the chickens, obviously. We're back in the house now. I'm about to cook dinner before we pack. And we are trying to name the last chicken that we have at the moment. Obviously, we have Snowdrop, which is proving quite difficult for Ali because um, he, he keeps calling her Snowbell because <laughs> we have Bluebell. <laughs> and um, I suggested Henny Penny from Beatrix Potter. Mm. Ali was, that was a resounding no from Ali. And so he comes to the table with Cluck Norris. <laughs> and what was the other one? I've got loads. It's actually courtesy of Mile Four. Okay. We've got Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln? Chick Jagger. Chick Jagger. <laughs> Agatha Christie. <laughs> Hennifer Aniston. Hennifer Sal. Aniston. Sal Monella. I just know, so <laughs> I know that Carrie is going to watch this and she's going to love these names because she wanted us to call our, our, our hens. Tootsie and... Yoko Ono. Yeah, <laughs> Yoko Ono. Um, oh, I just had one. So, Gwyneth Poultry. <laughs> Gwyneth Poultry! <laughs> no, we can call her that. Gwyneth. Gwyneth, and she could be Gwyneth for short. Gwyneth Poultry. I love that. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I love that. Gwy and then funny ones, you've got a public nuisance. Poop maker, oh, pipsqueak, right. mother clucker. Mother clucker. I think Gwyneth Poultry. I like. I, I will settle on Gwyneth Poultry because <laughs> we could call her Gwyneth for short. Cluck Kent. <laughs> Cluck Kent. Can I just feel? Look, can you just look at him, just <laughs> giggling to himself at his at his desk? Hillary Fluff. <laughs> Hillary Fluff. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> <laughs> so, on a serious note. Gwyneth Poultry, I like that one. So we've got Gwyneth. Can, can Snow Bell be called Snow White? And I hate, I hate that. No, that's like as if we were like Disney fans. Yeah, I don't like that actually. Snowdrop, her name's not Snow Bell. <laughs> and we get Snowdrops in the woods. I think that that's, that is her name. You'll get used to it. It's just that she's new. You're still calling um, Jemima Ginger Spice. <laughs> Chirpy Jiggy. I like Gwyneth Poultry. It's funny and I like, I like the name Gwyneth. Well, I liked the... Um, They're not as classy as your names that are really difficult to understand and remember. Yeah. You'll remember them. You didn't like Barclay's name to begin with, do you remember? Well, no, because I couldn't pronounce it. Berkeley. Yeah, you kept calling him Berkeley. <laughs> That's it. Gwyneth Poultry it is. Gwyneth. Yeah. Can't call her Gwyneth Poultry. No, it'd just be Gwyneth for sure, but her long name is Gwyneth Poultry. So Gwyneth is the one that's got no... Yeah. <laughs> I thought we'd finished being funny there, but we hadn't. Ali was like, what was the first few names that you said? It was like, Maple, Mabel, Myrtle, Gerritrude. <laughs> he meant Gertrude. So I think we have settled on Gwyneth Poultry. So we have Jemima, Beatrix, Gwyneth Poultry, um, Bluebell, Snowdrop, and hold on. Oh my gosh, we've got, no, that's it, because we've got five. Yes, Beatrix, Jemima, Gwyneth, Bluebell, and Snowdrop. <laughs> I've now just been down to the kitchen garden because I'm making us pasta for dinner. This is probably another one of my favorite courgette pasta dishes, which is basically cream cheese, parmesan, salt and pepper, courgettes, pasta, bit of lemon, and it tastes amazing. You can do it with like a herb uh, Philadelphia cream cheese, but I don't have that and I'm not bothered about making it. It tastes just as good without, so I'm gonna knock something up with these beautiful courgettes. I love it when they still have the flowers attached. Um, they just look so, so pretty. And the smaller they are, the more tasty they are. I'm gonna put in more courgettes than usual because it just packs out the pasta. So actually you end up eating more courgette than you do pasta, which I enjoy. We have just finished up dinner and Ali put the two 
new chickens in the coop because obviously they don't know that it's their coop yet and um they are having a little bit of i didn't have to touch them i just said if you don't get in your box now i'm gonna turn the oven on 200 degrees celsius <laughs> <laughs> and they just looked at me and carried on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's put them back in. Well, put them in the coop and I'm a little bit worried because they have definitely been being um, bullied a well, little bit. I don't bit. think that Snow... <laughs> Snow drop. drop. Has, I think she got pecked twice by Jemima. Yeah, um, it's Jemima, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the end. Well, actually, no. Also, a little bit of Beatrix. She's yeah. had a pop. Beatrix and Jemima were chasing around. Um... Gwyneth? Yeah. Gwyneth Poultry? Yeah, around the coochie <laughs> a bit just before they went to bed. I think there's some sort of chicken behaviour that we don't understand. Yeah. Snowdrop has managed to secure her position because she's not being pecked. As much. They've focused on Gwyneth. Gwyneth. Yeah. Gwyneth Poultry. And she did have a missing. <laughs> missing. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Um, and so, it'd be interesting to see because I noticed that there were a few that had missing fins. Fins. <laughs> Aerodynamic. <laughs> giblets. Yeah, I couldn't believe that they were called giblets. I thought they were. <laughs> they look like they should be called giblets. But also, Ali just walked into the gar uh, walked in from the garden, and. Uh, he said, God, we're doing a lot in our garden, aren't we? We've got um, solitary beehives, we've got honey beehives, we've got a kitchen garden, we've got chickens, we've got wildflower, we've got woodland. He was like, we've got everything. And I was like, yeah, we should, um, we should be on um, Gardener's World. And he was like, we should submit one of those, <laughs> one of those uh, videos where <laughs> they're like, <laughs> it could be like, hi, uh, I'm Lydia. Uh, Sorry, I'm really shy. I'm not used to being on camera. <laughs> oh dear. But no, loved, we'd love that, but I think maybe our garden's a little bit too new and a little bit, we're, we're probably not, um, we don't know enough, but. I'll watch it. Of course you would, babe, but we could just film it ourselves. In fact, you know how, um, how in the old school days of YouTube, they would film their house tours as if it was an episode of Cribs? We, we could be the, <laughs> the like 30s and above version of that is a garden tour pretending it's the Gardener's World <laughs> TV show. Okay. Uh, okay. We're going to do it. Oh my God, let's do it. The amount of times you've put your camera away, you've got it out. I know, but you're just giving us gold. I look at you two in the hallway. Oh, is he it's really? Too early to go to bed, mate. It's actually not. What time is it? It's like nine o'clock. <laughs> Look at that tail. Oh, seeing as we're here, um, I can show you that I planted this up as well. I don't think I've shown you what I planted. Um, I've gone for roses and angel vine and then moss. So that should be lovely when it sort of starts to grow a bit wild. And on the kitchen table, what I wanted was actually a trio of. Uh, strawberries. Now these are supposed to be outside, but Gemma does think that they'll be okay. I just need to find somewhere to put the tree, the lemon tree, because it's doing really, really well inside and especially doing really well in here. But I just love the sort of like cottage core vibes of the three strawberry pl plants. These are wild strawberries, so they do like little ones. Um, but I've also popped them in some really sort of vintage pots with moss that I found in the uh, greenhouse. I'm also enjoying how this ivy is looking as well, all like wrapped around the pictures and stuff. I actually think that looks quite wonderful. I didn't realize that ivy like this did so well inside. So, so good. Sweet baby dolphin. I don't know what that is, but we're going with it. This is how I left my dressing room um, because I've had so much to do today. I'm definitely not going to leave it like this. Um, but I do have to pack for, uh, let me put you down, oh my gosh, eh, too much stuff. So, I have to pack, oh my gosh, I'm falling over, because I am having an overnight stay tomorrow at The Grove. The Grove is in Watford, if you don't know. I grew up in, like, Croxley Green, which is next to Watford. 
and um, part of my growing up anyway. I start, the, the first part of my growing up was done in Chorleywood and the, the second part was done in um, Croxy Green. Contrary to popular belief, I have only lived in this area for a very small part of my life and I lived in Milton Keynes for a grand total of four years and um, didn't actually grow up there. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, um, I grew up near Watford and I remember when the Grove opened and it was one of those things that like when it's opening everyone was like oh my gosh have you seen that new place? All of the footballers are staying there, Obama stayed there. I mean I, I think Obama was a bit later, I might have left by that point. Yeah very very cool and so um, I've stayed with them a number of times as a guest and um, we're staying in the newly refurbished mansion suites. We were supposed to be there for the launch of uh, Bamford products into their spa and I was supposed to be having a treatment unfortunately I've not been able to book in because we do have to leave fairly early the next day uh, to head to another event all systems are go so I'm packing and I'm going to get to use my new Lillian Bean bits which my campaign with them just went live on my Instagram and I just love how many of you enjoy the brand as much as I do so I'm going to get packing well I'm actually probably not going to pack everything this morning I'm gonna tidy up in here and I'm gonna plan some outfits and um, then I'm gonna see how I get on for that because I just don't, I don't think I'm gonna actually pack properly this evening. I don't think I've got the minerals. Oh dear. Okay, let's have a look. This is just the game changer for me. My little double purpose travel bag so I can put like my essential makeup bits and pieces that I need in here. Obviously if I was going on a flight, I'd just put like a plastic see-through bag inside and take it out when necessary. And then in the bottom, it keeps all of my jewelry, which I just love. Um, it keeps it safe, it means it's with me, and yeah, this is just an absolute game changer. And the fact that it also has a matching passport wallet and luggage tag, I just, I love it. There's just so many reasons why this is great. Then obviously you can have it personalised as well, which I love. Um, such a great gift for someone, maybe they travel a lot, or maybe they've just got married and they've got new initials, or something like that. But yeah, I just love Lillian Bean stuff, so looking forward to using that, but after a big plate of pasta and my pasta baby, my trousers are undone. My dressing room is a lot tidier. I have organized a few outfits. I don't think I'm taking all of them, but um, just to get myself in the right zone that I've got options. Um, and just setting out some new pajamas, these beautiful sage silk lily silk pajamas. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to wear these. They are absolutely stunning. Anyway, I am going to leave this vlog here. Even though I've only vlogged a day, I feel like I have been non-stop with chatting to you and it's been such a lovely day. So I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!